Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing a relatively recent and somewhat interesting study that tries to resolve the issue or the problem we're having with not being able to find dark matter anywhere. And it does so by proposing a very intriguing way of potentially discovering what dark matter is really made out of and if it actually exists. And it proposes that we can actually look for signs of dark matter on the surface of the moon with the actual dark matter potentially being primordial, very, very tiny black holes. So let's talk a little bit more about this study and what exactly it tries to solve. And also just generally try to understand if any of this makes any sense. But I guess let's start with defining the problem. The problem of not really being able to understand what dark matter seems to be made out of. Now, just as in previous videos, I wanted to clarify something. As an actual concept, even though the words dark matter imply some sort of actual physical stuff, that's not entirely what it means at all. In this case, dark matter implies a phenomenon, a phenomenon that we're observing all across the universe and that doesn't seem to have a very good explanation. For example, the way galaxies spin, the way they interact with one another, the way that intergalactic space seems to bend light as it passes through it, and even some of the other signs from, for example, interactions of galaxies or even extremely ancient light coming from the early universe. All of these signs suggest that something seems to be attracting things and something seems to be holding things together. That something today is known as dark matter. But there are obviously a lot of other explanations, such as the explanations modifying the formula for gravity. And those explanations do make some sense, but they don't explain everything. And because of this, most scientists today do believe that dark matter could be actually something physical. For example, very massive particles known as WIMPs, or potentially some other invisible particles known as axions, or maybe even neutrinos. So all of these explanations kind of make sense, but so far nothing has been definitively found. And as a matter of fact, even to date some of the experimental evidence for dark matter particles seems to be very, very inconclusive. The experiments conducted in the last few years unfortunately are unable to find any specific particle that could be responsible for dark matter. But it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It just means that we're unable to find it and it's just very, very difficult to see or maybe we're just looking for a completely wrong thing. Now, back in the days, Stephen Hawking proposed a very different explanation, an explanation that many people agree with. Dark matter could actually be extremely tiny black holes, what we refer to as the primordial black holes. Their existence is theoretical, it's actually quite possible, and these black holes would exist from essentially the beginning of the universe, and in most cases these black holes would be very, very, very small. We're talking about way, way smaller than you can even imagine. So here, possibly size of an atom or even smaller than an atom. And because of their microscopic size, at the moment, there is really no practical way for us to look for them, even by using various detectors. And just a fun fact, but if something like planet Earth in mass turned into a black hole, it would only be approximately 17 millimeters across, or I guess about half an inch. Whereas if it was something in the mass of the moon, it would be a tiny, tiny pixel. And the less mass of the object, the smaller the black hole would be. But the formation history of these black holes will be entirely different, and also their evolution as well. So these are not produced from stars, they are not produced from centers of galaxies. They were essentially produced right in the beginning of the universe. When the universe started, it also produced these minute black holes. Or at least that's what some theoretical physicists believe might have happened. Now, some of the previous studies, like the one from Japan from approximately two years ago, tried to look for these primordial black holes that would be around the mass of a typical moon or planet Earth. And they didn't really find any in the nearby Andromeda galaxy. And they did this by looking at the stars in the Andromeda galaxy for a pretty long time and trying to see if any of these minute black holes would pass in front of those stars and produce an obvious gravitational lensing effect. This only happened once, and the scientists are not entirely certain what caused it. But what they seem to be certain about is that larger black holes, so we're talking about a mass of a few planets, or maybe down to mass of planet Earth, do not seem to represent dark matter, at least in the Andromeda galaxy. But in this case, or in this particular study, we're actually talking about something microscopic in size. Something so ridiculously small, that it can actually pass between atoms, and might only affect them through the huge amount of energy released as the atoms interact here. But it's most likely not going to absorb a lot of the matter in this case, and is not going to swallow the entire object or even a lot of these atoms. 
In other words, this particular type of a black hole can easily pass between atoms and we're not even going to know about it unless it produces a huge amount of energy. It's not going to absorb most of these atoms and it's most likely only going to affect them temporarily. And so in theory, when the universe just began, a lot of these black holes were probably relatively close to one another. And a lot of these small black holes could have even produced relatively large swarms interacting with early galaxies and causing a lot of other unusual gravitational effects. But over time, a lot of these black holes would slowly start to disperse and most likely move to the outskirts of various galaxies, which is actually kind of where we do expect a lot of dark matter to be today. And that's sort of the theory. And it's a pretty interesting and a pretty fundamentally solid theory, but practically speaking, it would be difficult to prove any of this. Unless we do what the scientists in this paper suggest, which is actually a pretty interesting proposition. They propose to look at moons, not just our moon, many different moons across the solar system. And the question that the scientists are trying to answer in the study is actually pretty interesting and pretty clever. If we look at the surface of the moon, not just our moon, really any moon in the solar system, and if we then try to analyze these craters, can we actually tell if they were produced by an asteroid, by a collision with some sort of a massive object, or if they were produced by something entirely different? Such as some sort of a really compact and extremely exotic object. For example, a primordial black hole. And at first the scientists didn't really know how to answer this. In theory, if the collision occurs, it's probably still going to look relatively similar to a typical asteroid. Or in other words, if a black hole with the same mass as an asteroid collides or passes through the planet, and at the same time an asteroid collides somewhere as well, the actual signs are very likely going to be relatively similar. Mostly because you have relatively similar masses producing relatively similar amounts of energy. But in this case, what the scientists in this paper realized is that the crater will actually have some slight differences. The collision here is not exactly the same. With the biggest difference being that other matter that splashes around and produces a lot of these other effects we observe when asteroids collide with something else. And in this case, the scientists provide us with the simulation helping us visualize what all of this might look like. So let's start with an asteroid collision. This is what it might look like from the side when an asteroid collides and starts to produce a typical crater that we know appears on surfaces of various objects. In this case, when the crater is finished producing, it will usually have a valley-like structure that we normally observe from a lot of different asteroids across the solar system. And it's also going to produce this relatively small hill right in the middle that's produced when the impact occurs and that can even have multiple structures on the inside if the crater is big enough. But now let's watch a primordial black hole colliding with the same surface. Notice how it literally bores through the entire surface as if nothing was stopping it. And because of this, it's actually going to produce an extremely different shape on the surface. As a matter of fact, they don't really deposit a lot of the energy on the surface. The energy of the collision sort of spreads through the object, essentially going all the way across to the other side of the object, and it's then going to be coming out from the other side. And that's literally because they're so tiny. Because of their small size, they shoot through the object and come out on the other side. They barely get any interaction from anything in the object itself. In this case, the scientists compared this to sort of drilling a tunnel using dynamite. Except that in this case, you're drilling through the entire planet, or the entire moon in this case. And because of this, there are certain signs of these craters that should be visible somewhere on the surface. And the most obvious changes that should be visible are going to be in the ejecta blanket. So all of this is going to be somewhat different from what we're used to observing. And so even though it's going to be producing a circular crater, the center of the crater and also the rim of the crater are going to be just a little bit different. So for example, the rim here is going to be much, much steeper and much, much taller. And we're also not going to have any central peak right here, which is often produced as the matter sort of goes back up. But in this case, all of this is going to be going down. And so it might resemble something you see right here. But a much more important sign of these events is going to be on the other side of this object. We actually expect this object to produce two craters. And that means that on the other side of the object, or in this case somewhere on the other side of the moon, we should be able to see a somewhat similar crater with a relatively similar energy produced, and it should be almost entirely across from the first crater. Or in other words, let's just say something like this was produced by this event, if we now look on the other side, we should be able to find some other similar crater 
with extremely similar properties but possibly looking just a little bit different because that's where the black hole came out. Which also means that, in theory at least, we can easily prove or to some extent disprove this by, I guess, using some sort of an algorithm using artificial intelligence. So basically by using machine learning here, some of the future studies can try to analyze if there are any similar craters right across from each other on the surface of the moon. And if by some luck someone discovers that there are two craters on the opposite sides of the moon and they seem to have extremely similar properties, that's going to be a telltale sign that something like this did indeed happen. Considering that we have a very accurate map of the moon today, it should be possible. On the other hand, the scientists also propose using this on other objects. In this case, all of the moons. The moons of Jupiter, the moons of Saturn, and possibly even the moons of Neptune and Uranus. If we're able to analyze all of the moons, we might be able to discover something. And if we find nothing, well, that means that this theory was just a very interesting hypothesis, but it was proven incorrect. And actually, the best object to study would be Mercury. Because of its proximity to the Sun and because it's sort of closer to the center of the solar system, in theory it has a much higher chance to experience these events. And in theory we should be able to find most of these unusual collisions somewhere on the surface of this planet. So definitely something to look forward to in the future when someone finds a way to study this in more detail. But for now, I guess before I finish, let's try to answer some concerns and potential questions. First question is, okay, well, if this collides with planet Earth, is this basically game over? Are we going to be experiencing a catastrophic end of the world? Well, in this case, previous analysis determined that it's really not going to cause anything major. The amount of energy distributed here is going to be very similar to an asteroid collision, but most of this energy is going to be deposited in the upper atmosphere. Unlike a typical asteroid collision, most of the energy is never really going to reach the surface. Now, the explosion itself is still probably going to be relatively powerful, depending of course on the mass of the black hole, and it might even leave some sort of a crater behind, but once again, depending on the mass, the effects are not going to be too catastrophic. By the way, fun fact, one of the potential explanations for the Tunguska event, because nobody ever found any asteroids or any leftover rocks anywhere, was potentially a primordial black hole that passed somewhere in the upper atmosphere, and that explanation kind of makes sense. But there are much better explanations and we've discussed them in one of the previous videos. And on the other hand, the researchers also suggest that many of these black holes are probably extremely far away from anything today. So experiencing a collision in modern times is going to be almost impossible, it's an extremely unlikely event. But it might have happened in the past. And when these collisions occurred on, for example, the surface of the moon, they would also transform some of the minerals right here on the surface, which in theory we can actually analyze if one day we go back to the moon and if we study these minerals in detail. In this case, the collision itself is going to produce extremely hot temperatures, much, much hotter than a typical asteroid collision. And because of this, the minerals are going to experience a much different transformation from a typical asteroid collision. So if some of the rocks in the crater are different, it's another telltale sign that something really, really exotic happened here. And so that's kind of where we stand right now, and that's kind of all we know. In the future, I'm sure someone is going to analyze these craters and is going to produce a good enough picture for us to see if anything like this did happen. For now, we don't really know. So make sure to subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, because we're going to be coming back and talking about this in some of the future videos. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. And either way, stay wonderful, thank you so much for watching, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.